lot of you know, J.J. Jasper. J.J. Jasper, of course, is the morning guy over on the music side of AFA. And J.J., you've heard me talk about this before, uh, and we've interviewed J.J. before, but it's been a few months since J.J. and Melanie's book came out. And the book is called Losing Cooper, and it is it, – it is an incredible book. My, as a matter of fact, this book, my wife bought a case of these books because she wanted to share them and give them to so many uh, people in her women's Bible study and other people. And if you, you know, it's a, it's a story about finding hope uh, and, and, and a story about helping people grieve well. And I know that uh, that was the main focus and the premise of the book. And uh, first of all, let me just say, welcome, JJ. I appreciate you being here. Dan, so good to be here. Thank you. But let me just say that um, I, I, when I read the book, and I think I told you this, JJ, when I read the book, um, I, I said everybody in the country needs to read this book. Uh, there was, there's a chapter 13 in the book on forgiveness that was uh, my second favorite chapter chapter 10, which was Melanie's chapter, the chapter that your wife wrote. Um, but everybody struggles with forgiveness in some way, shape, or form. And I was so moved by chapter 13. I mean, it just blew me away. And my, my two daughters ha- were hesitant. They didn't want to read the book. They just didn't, they couldn't read it. Because the story is about a little five-year-old boy who dies and it's close to a mother's yes. heart. Yes, it is. And they just didn't feel like they had the emotions, emotional stability to read the book. They, they, didn't, they didn't want to read it, um, now, at least now. So I asked them to read chapter 13. I said, just read chapter 13 because it's something that is just practical things that we all need to understand about forgiveness. And they did, and they read chapter 13. And then, of course, you had to read the rest of the book. <laughs> so they did. And uh, they, they were a little mad at me for that because they felt like I conned them into reading the rest of the book, but uh, mad because it is an incredible story, but it is an emotional story mm. uh, for any. It's a tearjerker. It is. It is. It's an emotional story, but I, I you know, I just want to say before we, before I ask you a couple of questions to our listeners, if you, if many of you have read the book, if you haven't, if you haven't read the book, look, AFA Store, AFA Store dot net. It is an absolute, I, I hate to say it's a must because we say that all the time. Look, if you want to if, if you want to feel a little bit healthier and a little bit uh, better and a little bit closer to the Lord at any point in time in your life, uh, this is a book that you need to read so that you have it as a frame of reference to draw upon and to go back to. And you really need to read this book. Uh, it's not that you should. It's not something you need to read it. And uh, you need to go to afastore.net. And I can almost promise you that if you order the book and get in and read it, you're probably going to get back and, and order a few more books because you're not going to want to give yours up and you're going to want to get it to people. And as I said, my wife ordered a, a, an entire case. They're all gone. They were gone in a, in a week or so. And um, it, it, because she just knew so many people that just had to read this book. We got a call from two different grief counselors and they ordered 10 each because they wanted to use it in their grief setting. And he said, I know that you did not go to school for grief counseling, but he said, it's a textbook. It's a manual. This is a roadmap to get where you are right now to the place where you can say, I'm grieving well. The title of the book, Losing Cooper, but the subtitle tells the story, Finding Hope to Grieve Well. And then we know that people have lost their jobs. Uh, their home is in foreclosure. They've had a a grandparent or a parent pass away. Maybe even like our family, they've lost a child, which arguably is the worst pain on the planet. We've heard that from many. And so to be able to come out on the other side, we wanted to offer hope on the other side of tragedy to anyone who's hurting. So we really prayerfully offered this as a, a roadmap to say, if we can do this and we're still standing by God's grace because of his love and his mercy, than you can with mm. whatever you're struggling with. So now we've the book's been out a few months, and we've heard from hundreds of people who have said how much hope they gleaned from the book. How many couples um, that go through something like this end up in divorce? 
uh, the the uh, the number is staggering. And when we saw how many, we heard eighty nine percent of marriages fail. Eighty nine percent doesn't take much to round that up. Yeah. I'm not even Dan Celia, and I can round that up to ninety <laughs> percent right. of marriages that fail if there's the death of a small child. And uh, uh, Dan, so many people are saying how uh, the, I guess the number one uh, word is hope. That's interesting. You talked about the Forgiveness chapter because a pastor in uh, Michael Memorial Baptist Church in Gulfport, Mississippi, had Melanie and I come to the stage, and he touted the exact same thing. He said, my favorite chapter in the book was about forgiveness. Uh, The ones that we've heard from so many, their favorite chapter is Melanie's chapter, and she told me no the first 20 times I asked her to write Mm -hmm. it. She said, Mm -hmm. she's never taught a Sunday school class. She's not comfortable in front of a mic. And I said, she said, I don't have anything to say. I said, you're a mother. I have no idea about the nurturing mother's heart. And you can speak to that to moms. And she did a phenomenal job. So we're so grateful that God is using this. In fact, I just got this note uh, coming over to be on the show this morning from an English teacher, Marcy, if I've got time to share this. Marcy said, she said she met me at a speaking event, was saying some nice things about AFR. Then she said, about losing Cooper, I added to my list of books that have forever changed me. Each day as I curled up on our couch to read a chapter, I find myself smiling and laughing at moments, and then at other times found myself sobbing to the point of laying down the book and having to walk away. Oh, how my heart ached for your family with each page turned, but how my heart rejoiced as well as I saw the unconditional love of a family and the hope of eternity with my Savior. A great writer writes from the heart, and that is what you did, J.J. You've written a book that may never be uh, uh, win, a, win a Nobel Prize or be on the bestsellers list, but you have something more, a story of truth that comes straight from the heart and honors God. Mm. Yeah, and honors God, and, and it's so, uh, it does come straight from the heart, and it's so obvious. You don't have to read very far to figure that out. And when you start reading, it's very hard to put down because of that. You, you feel like uh, God, I feel like God was in this book as, he, as you were writing it for certain, uh, because knowing that it's going to minister to so many of his children, hmm. um, I know that he was in this book. And, you know, it's, it is a, um, you know, it is a ministry that um, Cooper, uh, that, that God used Cooper to give so many of us, you know, and it's such a blessing uh, to see the ministry of a little five-year-old uh, growing stronger and stronger, uh, and it's the coolest thing. And I couldn't help think about that. Not I couldn't help not think about that as I was, you know, I was reading the book. Yeah, you know how how neat that was. Well, and you think how Jesus took the little boy's lunch and was able to feed thousands, right? And we right. think about our little blonde-haired, blue-eyed boy who was only five years old when he died in the accident on our farm, but how God is using his story. Uh, to to impact millions now Mm. and so yes it's the story about our little five-year-old boy cooper but beyond that uh, we've included a love story there are chapters about as you mentioned forgiveness guilt and regret a chapter titled grieving well there's a title uh, a chapter titled hope so we tried to share the gospel throughout the book we included scripture and we just try and and you know i had uh, the editor of the afa journal said, since your signature is humor, don't be afraid to make people laugh. And I said, well, that feels sort of like a whiplash and seems a little sacrilegious. He said, no, it's going to be such a heavy read. You're going to need to include stories, fun stories about Cooper and the other children. Mm. And don't be afraid to make people laugh. So that is is spaced out there. And we've heard from so many people, they say, I'm laughing one minute, then I'm crying the next. And so uh, we're so very grateful. Max Lucado endorsed the book. So many others. Yeah, I was just going through that. I'm looking at, you know, uh, Janet Parshalls and Max Lucado and Dr. Robert Jeffers. Uh, Just, you know, when when you look at uh, Steve and Annie Chapman, who relate well uh, to to, uh, the book, I'm sure. And, you know, when you look at some of the great Christian leaders that read this book and are just uh, were as blown away as... uh, as, as, as any person, you know, I mean, it's just so, so, uh, incredible. And I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's hit a million yet. It sure, sure, uh, should have, <laughs> it well, should have. We're very and, grateful and, and, to and the I, Lord. I hope it does. And again, it's AFA store, AFA store.net folks, AFA store.net. Uh, Make sure you, uh, call, order the book, uh, 
losing Cooper, and you're going to you might want to just start out ordering four or five of them because you're going to go back and order them. Dan, uh, if anyway, I can mention, sure. the book's out on paperback now. It's at Lifeway and different Christian books. People can get the Kindle version. But what I like about when you go to AFA Store, that helps the ministry. Yeah. So if you go to afastore.net, you can order the book. And uh, what we were hoping is that uh, in, in each church, you would have it in the library, each community. It may not happen uh, right now. But you wait a few weeks, there's going to be a tragedy, unfortunately, in the community, and nobody really knows quite what to say. Well, I, I prayerfully and tearfully spent a year and a half finding the words to, mm. to speak to that person who yeah. is just completely devastated and to offer help and hope in the Lord. And so you can just give that with a, a card and say, when you get the strength to read this, here's a wonderful resource. And you know, uh, I remember, I remember JJ, uh, you and I were driving uh, in a car from uh, New Mexico or no, where were we going? San Antonio, San Antonio to Albuquerque, New Mexico. And it was a long drive. And, and uh, you said, Hey, you know, I'm, um, and you were sitting in the back seat and you were writing and you said, can I read you a couple of chapters and, and, uh, or some things that I'm writing, let me know what you think. And, and I said, is it going to make me cry? And you said, oh, no, no. <laughs> so that was the first lie. And uh, so he, uh, he read me these things. And uh, Diane O'Neill was with us and Riley yes. were with us. We were doing, or I guess we were doing a town hall we meeting. We were doing a, the a, town hall Antonio. meetings, yes. And, um, uh, it, it, you know, when I, when I heard that chapter, as annoyed as I, I was, it was that Am you made me. Uh, Amarillo. Amarillo, I think that's where town. we were. You're right. Yeah, Amarillo. And, um as annoyed as I was that, you know, you lied to me about that whole crying thing, but I knew it was going to be a book that everybody had to read. Folks, what, Dan, what Dan's not going to say, he's shy. He, he provided a lot of good coaching because we were traveling a lot together then, and I was, I was writing rough drafts of the chapters, and he was, he was tweaking the chapters and adding some insight. And so uh, thank you for your endorsement of this book, Dan, and for your help. But uh, – Boy, all glory to God. Mm. It, it is our prayer that he will continue to use losing Cooper, finding hope to grieve well. And again, we've, uh, we've heard from, from, uh, from hundreds of people who have taken the time to write and say, you know, how much that it meant to them. I was invited to go to a church and speak at both services and then in the afternoon to have a, a session on grief. There'd been a lot of tragedy uh, to this particular church. And so he asked, would I preach both services and then do that and bring the books as well? Mm. And just to sit around that circle and to hear of people that have suffered from loss, and it doesn't have to be the loss of a loved one. Again, if you lose your job, if you lose your home, people need help right. to be able to grieve well. And yeah. so it's well, exciting to, to see the Lord use this for his glory. Go to afastore.net, and folks, do it right now, afastore.net, because I'm afraid you forget you have to get this book. If you don't do anything else, get two copies so you can make sure your church library has it in there um, and, and make sure you do that. You're going to minister to an awful lot of people by doing that. Losing Cooper, afastore.net. JJ Jasper, thank you so much. I sure appreciate Thank you, uh, Dan. the time to do this.